are the people. <laughs> we are the power. We are the 99%. Stand up! We are proud individuals living for the city, but the flame couldn't go much higher. We just stand out here, keep in guard, yeah. <laughs> We're just having a little bit of fun supporting our friends across the UK. We are in Bristol um, right now. And uh, Holy Skin Tattoo Studio Jeez. is doing exactly what every other independent business, uh, small, medium, should large business can do. Um, not even should, could or would. It's, yeah. their, it's their right to do it. Uh, if you want to get into religion, it's a God-given right to do it. Um, there is no law closing down businesses. You have to remember the government they put out a thing called legislation, they spell cast. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you close your business down. You mm -hmm. lock the door. You are the ones that close your businesses, not them. What they try and use is, in, uh, is what's known as intimidation. Yep. And they, they put out all these so-called fines and other things that and they try and tell you that, you know, you're gonna get a 10,000 pound fine, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get that. But the whole thing about it is, is it's a joke. Re-education process for them all, I think. <laughs> Everyone does that, it's a video. Oh, is that? <laughs> it's the intimidation they get off on the bullying. That's, that's all part of the programming. What's that? <laughs> My poor clients, right? Everyone I've had in the chair recently has been having like tattoos in sections. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, there you Birthday to you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said bring me one down. And you brought it down, so what are you? Wait, nothing. You can have it. Yeah, they said. Uh, what's that? If I turn up on Saturday, yeah. Apparently, I'm the event organizer. So if I turn up on Saturday, I'm going to get arrested with ten thousand pounds. Yeah, whatever. Point. Whatever. We we'll just get you one in an affidavit to print it out. Yeah. I do not stand under your jurisdiction. Stand on the common law, which is on the natural law, which is on the God's law. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the same law that the Queen has assigned herself to. So anything yeah. above the Queen is God, and I assign them to that law. So if there's no victim, there's no crime, if there's no crime, there's no criminal. Therefore, no law has been broken today. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to congratulate you, anyway, yeah, good, good on it. Nice. Good on you all. Yeah. Yeah. Spread the word, brother, spread yeah. the word. Take care yeah. of the Spread it like COVID. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be the new slogan. Spread it like COVID. Spread it like COVID. <laughs> spread the truth like COVID. Uh, I've just had my first tattoo. Uh, I decided I had a lovely heart on, the, on my arm. So. Can you see it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> there we are. A beautiful red heart. Um, I've never, I, I'm 66, I'm a retired GP. Uh, I've never had any inclination to get a tattoo. Uh, and my daughter was uh, speaking on last Thursday, first day of lockdown, saying how ridiculous this whole, whole business is. And uh, she said she would go anywhere in London and eat uh, and put up a laptop and have breakfast, lunch and dinner at uh, any restaurant that, or cafe that wanted to stay open. Um, and I thought, and I tweeted, I made a comment, I'll do the same. And literally, it must have been about a minute later, this person came up on my screen saying, we are going to stay open with our tattoo parlor. And I thought, oh, God is joking. <laughs> so, and I just knew that I had to have a tattoo. So uh, I, I came along on, Friday and they said well we can't we can't do it today but uh, come back on Monday I came on Monday uh, very uh, Tess offered to uh, do it on Wednesday and here I am so uh, I just think it's I, from my perspective this is completely disproportionate what's being done uh, it, it's it's not there's no logic to it I've been a GP 30 years I've seen flu epidemics I've fe seen pandemics I've seen those things happening and this is a nasty flu. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't think it's all a hoax. I basically do believe it. But the bottom line is, and I've, I've seen the effects of it, but 
it is a flu. It's a seasonal respiratory virus, which frankly, you know, it's, it, it has a mortality worldwide of between two and three per thousand. And here we are doing this whole damage across the country, across the world. And it's just really difficult to understand, unless you're perhaps a, a pharmaceutical company and you want to sell vaccines. Uh, but it just, it's just beyond belief uh, that, uh, you know, we can't hug our grandchildren, we can't hug our children. We're told that we can't mix. We're told that if, if someone in our house has a blood, has a, a swab test, which is positive, um, that everybody in that household must stay indoors under house arrest for two weeks. Everybody's well. It's not, it, they're not going to be sick. There will be a few people sick, but it, you know, the numbers are, are, are similar to how many we have as flu. When I first qualified as a doctor, I was told that you treat people, you don't treat lab test results. No. You treat people, you don't test, treat lab test results. And that was the, that was the bottom line. Oh, school, school. And now, not only are we treating lab test results, we're treating the families of people who have a lab test result. So you've got PCR positive, the other five people in your household have all got to stay indoors under house arrest for two weeks. And if you leave, we'll arrest you and take you back. Uh, on the basis of lab test results, we're treating populations on the basis of lab test results. And now we're running the whole country based on lab test <laughs> results and they're flawed they have false positives uh, certainly sorry, when sorry, you know it's 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 it's, it's it's so obvious yeah. and you know they've just done a new test in Liverpool and that, they can't find people with with it no. because no. it basically it faded away it's a seasonal thing no. we had a, we did no, have a pandemic you. I don't I don't you know I'm not one of those things who say it's all a hoax this is a it climbed we had a pandemic there were more deaths the normal back in April and May but it finishes it finishes in in May and June and then since then and we've got a slight upturn uh, because it's uh, we're entering into autumn and winter it's basically you have genetic material you get you get in touch with it but our bodies are designed to deal with it we are we've got 99.9 percent .9 of a well 99.8 percent two in a thousand will die of this so 99.8 percent will survive you know, there's a, a nurse, a care home just up the road from here. They had a positive test early on in the thing. They had a positive test in the care home. What do we do? They spent five weeks umming and ahhing about what they did. And basically, none of the other residents, none of the residents were ill. The positive test, uh, you know, the person had a positive test, but they weren't ill. And these are people in their 80s and 90s with, with multiple pathologies. 76. Disabled, born crippled. Yeah. Okay. Taken into hospital for a leg infection. On his release, on a week before his release, he was then diagnosed um, with COVID-19. I said, okay, so I spoke to the nurse and she goes, oh, we've got some bad news. Your uncle's diagnosed with COVID-19. I said, right, COVID-19 is a list of symptoms, correct? And she's like, no, it's not a disease. It's a list of symptoms, same as AIDS. It's an asymptomatic uh, listing. Uh, and she was like, okay. I said, so the doctor phoned me up on Monday and they wanted me to do the triage, do not resuscitate. And they said, oh, we've assessed your uncle and your uncle, we think DNR is probably the best way forward. I said, excuse me. I said, eh, what records do you have on my uncle? I mean, his legs are crippled and stuff. Um, and they were like, well, we recommend. I said, okay. I said, on what? He goes, well, he's having difficulty breathing. I said, well, first and foremost, you've isolated him, put him in a room by himself and you've not given him any contact. I said, and you've dropped him off all his medication. You put him into cold turkey. So his body's going into basically a, a, what you call a cleansing process now. So he's detoxing his liver and his kidneys. All the tablets that you keep putting into him is now cleansing out. And they were like, okay. And I said, so DNR is not going to happen ever. I said, I can tell you his heart's stronger than a racehorse. It's actually stronger than yours, doctor. I said, but you, because it doesn't look like that, I can tell you it is. And the next day, another doctor phoned me up. <laughs> Exactly the same thing, and I just said, I, what, "Did you guys not communicate?" I said, "There is going to be no DNR triage. Forget it." I said, that guy will we, he won't walk out of there. He will come out of that hospital with a big smile on his face. And they're like, "Oh no, we, we think it's going to be bad news." What happened two weeks later? Fine, absolutely yeah. fine. It's loaded, and but it's on his certificate, on his medical certificate, it's still there. Yeah. And I've contacted him again. They said, "Oh no, he didn't have it in the end. He had uh, acute pneumonia." Yeah. I said, "Well, take it off then." Oh, we can't. What do you mean you can't take it off? So if he does die from a car crash or something, yeah, he will die. It'd be, yeah. be a case of statistics. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, I'm very grateful to you all <laughs> for uh, offering this uh, service.
<laughs> yes, yes. You got any words for us? Do not comply, do not consent, do not answer any questions. Tell them the fuck off. <laughs> just smile and be silent. Smile just be polite. Really that's the hardest thing for me is keeping my yeah, cool because yeah. I just that's, want to kick off. I'm like, right, you know what? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready, I'm ready to fucking go to war war. It's so hard for me to keep it cool, nice. isn't it? That's the hard part. Like, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll come down tomorrow and find his gun, his tattoo gun. He's tattooed the lines all along there. Yeah. He's ready to go. You'll take my Facebook. You'll never take my freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Some people Facebook is freedom. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah it is. Singing we are ninety nine percent. Singing we are the ninety. Together we are mighty. We are the 99%. Right, so every time this door shut, every time we shut this door and we have a day, it's another day of success. And uh, it gives everyone a little bit more hope. Keep your doors shut, keep your doors locked, guys. You know, and um, just say no. Just say no. Like Grange Hill. Like Grange Hill, yeah. <laughs> just say no. <laughs> just say no. We do not consent. And we are not locking this studio ever. It's unlawful, it's illegal, this lockdown. Yeah. Hear, hear.